All right, what's going on, guys? Trev back again, here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video for today, leading up to the 11th episode for The Walking Dead Season 9. In this one, we're going to give our thoughts first for Q&A on the most recent ratings for the last episode of The Walking Dead, episode 10 being the lowest rated episode of the entire series. And spoiler warning, as per usual, if you guys are not cut up for The Walking Dead, which like we said is up to episode 10 for The Walking Dead Season 9. So I thought we'd start off today giving our thoughts on this one. And if you guys have any other Q&A questions for tomorrow, go ahead and send them to me and maybe we can do another one tomorrow. So uh, episode 10, the lowest rated episode the series has ever had. Uh, I was kind of surprised when I read this one. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that unexpected. Okay, so here's basically what happened from what... Uh, from uh, what I've heard or what I've read online. So it looks like the mid-season premiere, episode 9, uh, was did pretty good. It actually went up from the uh, where they ended off the first half of The Walking Dead season 9. So the mid-season premiere did 5.16, and the mid-season finale did 5.09, uh, which, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad. You know, it's about where the season has been trending. Uh, this episode here, episode 10, uh, 4.54, which is the lowest U.S. Uh, viewership for The Walking Dead that it has ever had. It is lower than any episode from season one uh, and any any other season as well, any other season the series has ever had, um, you know, or, or any other episode of the series, yeah, the series has ever had. Even the first episode of the series got uh, 5.35. The second was 4.71, which was the lowest of the first season, so 4.54 for episode 10 of season nine makes, it the, makes Omega the uh, least viewed episode in the entire series of The Walking Dead. So, okay, so what do we think? Uh, and you guys can certainly leave your comments below. Uh, was the mid-season premiere that bad that only, you know, that less people came back to watch it the next week? Um, there was also NBA on, stuff like that. So, there, you know, there's always other stuff going on too. Uh, personally for me, I just think like, you know, it's it's kind of to be expected. I mean, we're going into 10 years now, right? So it's almost amazing the series is still running strong and they're still able to do 16 hour long block with commercials and extended. A lot of them are extended now too. Uh, episodes for this many years running strong. Uh, that would be the 125th episode of the series overall with it being a, an hour block some extended episodes and with it being such a unique type of series that's never been done before right so personally i mean you know even though it sounds really bad like at first like oh it's the lowest the lo least amount of people watch this episode than ever before um personally i don't think it's that bad i mean i thought the episode was uh, was a pretty good episode i thought it was okay uh, of course uh, the first uh, little bit of it there like maybe the the last you know five to ten minutes was really exciting uh, when Alpha shows up and everything at the hilltop. Prior to that, you know, you get a lot of backstory with Alpha and Lydia. Maybe that had something to do with it because maybe people didn't know what they were watching when they saw kind of the flashback sequences of Alpha and that kind of stuff. People might have been like, this isn't Walking Dead, I'm going to switch, right? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So that could have happened too. But, you know, I mean, it's it's not a big deal. It's pretty close to where it was before. It's only down like from 5.16 to uh, 5.54 or 4.54. Um, so... It's what it is. Uh, I mean, I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm surprised that it went down that much and that it is actually lower than any episode they've ever done. But I figured that it's it's something that's going to happen. Of course, they have the uh, premiere series so they can get people to sign up that way. And so, you know, I think that's probably fine. And if they go on forward with uh, that, type of, uh, that type of range, it's probably no problem. And I don't think they'll dip much more than that as we go through this back half of the season unless the episodes are really dry or really drawn out or something like that but i thought the ending of the episode was great so i'm thinking next week more people should want to watch than people actually watched uh, that episode and i don't think the mid-season premiere was that bad either that only that many people came back they promoted the mid-season premiere a lot so they they put a lot into super bowl ads and different things like that to try to get people to continue to watch the walking dead and i think for the most part it uh, it worked uh, but after that you know of course you're going to get a few less people watching so it's not a disaster even though it's the lowest this is a trend it's been something that's been going for years and it's not like uh, something that's totally unexpected it's just a little little strange to read to see that it's lower than even where the series started at 
And the first one came from uh, Randall Reno, who says, uh, they need to wind this show up. The original story is gone. So, I mean, it is, you're, you're kind of right as far as the original story being gone. You know, it is a new version of The Walking Dead at this point. You know, we don't have that original story with Rick and Shane and Lori. The show has completely changed itself, even Carl being gone too. Uh, surprisingly, though, we have Judith, who is sort of related to the original story. It's like The Walking Dead 2 now is really what it is, and, and Daryl kind of leading the, uh, the series and Carol and Michonne. So it certainly has changed, uh, but I don't think that means that they need to end it. I think that they kind of did that with episode 5 and the time skip helped separate it. Uh, I'm just very surprised they didn't rebrand it as The Walking Dead 2 uh, and, and continue on from there and kind of uh, restart the episode number and everything like that and end the series because that would have probably been good for uh, for hype and everything like that to, to wrap up the the series and then and then relaunch it. But they didn't do that, uh, which you know also the advantage of not doing that is that you get to continue with the episode run number and uh, you get to uh, continue with that fan base you already have. So you get to just kind of go on right on further uh, when not having to end the original uh, series. So that, that's what they opted to do. Uh, I probably would have done it the other way, but hey, you know what? It's, it's cool. You know, the, the Walking Dead 2 idea and then start it after the uh, six-year time skip and end the original series. Uh, the end of the series would have been a big... Uh, you know, it was pretty big anyway because they promoted it as Rick's final episodes and everybody wanted to watch that. So that was good. Jackie Varner says, Trev, lots of changes in these last two years, but Hell's Bells, even without Rick, the real Dead Nation is loyal to the end. Love your channel. Uh, keep it up, uh, brother, and uh, love your dedication. So thank you for Jackie and for all of you guys who are still sticking with the channel, sticking with the videos, and, and sticking with The Walking Dead. You know, I mean... I'm just basically doing what, I, what I've been doing all the way through, right? I'm just doing the same thing I've, I've always done. I'm still enjoying the series. I'm enjoying seeing The Whispers. It's awesome. There's not a whole lot else on TV that, um, you know, I would compare really to The Walking Dead right now. So I'm just, you know, we're just keep going right on forward. I am pretty dedicated. That's one thing about me that does differentiate me from a lot of people. I tend to be loyal and I tend to you know, stick with things, uh, and I don't let, let up too easy. I'm still reviewing Fear of the Walking Dead. <laughs> so, you know, I'm talking about sticking with stuff and not dropping stuff. Uh, I mean, that series, you know, of course, the original Walking Dead, that's kind of easy, but the fact that we've stuck with Fear of the Walking Dead all these years, despite everything that, all the hate that series gets, it's like the most hated series ever. It's, it's really a strange thing. It's like, people want to find out what's going on, they want to watch it, but they just, everybody hates it. It's just this weird thing with fear. It's like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just disappointment because everyone wanted it to be better than, or as good as the original series. And they feel like it, it never was. And, and I don't know. It's just, uh, it's funny. But yeah, we stick with it, man. We keep right on going until the very end. So that's what I hope to uh, to do with you guys here. And I hope you'll, I hope at least some of you will stick around for that. So I appreciate it. Corey Connell says, I love season four. Too Far Gone is still my favorite episode of all time. So that's one that I actually hear quite a bit from people. If you guys missed it, in the last video we did, uh, we went through Screen Rant's uh, ranking of the seasons, of the best seasons of The Walking Dead. And... Um, a lot of people really love that season four, Too Far Gone, the final battle for the governor. They liked the group and the group that was uh, was together at that time. They liked seeing Merle. They liked seeing you know some of those other, you know, Daryl and the rest uh, at that time, Beth and Maggie. And just the group that they had at the prison was pretty cool, man. It's certainly, there's a lot more characters in it now, but uh, that was really exciting back then when they had that. That said, you couldn't keep doing that forever. It has to change, and, and it certainly has. You know, there's almost... Almost nobody from that story arc is still even in the series at this point. It's like uh, you know Daryl and uh, and uh, Carol. You can count. You can, well, Michonne came in around that time too. So just the OG ones, right? Ash Williams says uh, by season fourteen they will be at two hundred episodes. So let's see if they get to that point. Uh, in the interview we went over for the Walking Dead's future, Angela Kang kind of said that she has to approach each season as putting in the best stuff every season, is doing the best they can do every single time. You know, there, it sounds like there's a lot of pressure to do that, and, and it's not the type of thing where she can... It's not a lock. Like, I, it's not guaranteed that they're going to get to season 14 and do 200 episodes. I hope they do, um, but it's not locked in. It's not guaranteed that we'll see that for The Walking Dead. I hope we will, but with Michonne leaving and everything else that's been going on, We'll have to see uh, how much the fan base sticks around and where they need where they need to keep The Walking Dead at. I would say for you guys, just to and, and this is outside looking in, but if they go below about three million uh, U.S. viewers per episode in the next couple of years, you might be looking at 
cancellation territory. You might be, because it's not an easy series to make. It's not as easy to make as a procedural crime drama. You know, it's not as easy to make as something like that. They have to build these environments. They have to build these sets. They have to do all this stuff. So if it goes below maybe three or two, you know, uh, yeah, and this year at uh, New York uh, Toy Fair, usually they show a whole bunch of, uh, McFarland Toys usually shows a whole bunch of product for The Walking Dead. This year, zero, again, so no new product for Walking Dead. So that tells you where the demand is at, and and because and, and they're not making anything for it. It's like, not even one thing, unless I just didn't see it, but I went through all the stuff I could find, and I don't see anything for it. It's like, no new product for it? Well, man, that's uh, it's kind of, kind of a disappointment for Walking Dead fans, because... It's like you don't have anything, but then again, you can't fault them if no one's buying it. They got to stop making it, right? It's like when they made Fear the Walking Dead figures. Like <laughs> nobody bought them. It's like, well, they can't keep doing it. You know, you're not going to see an Alicia figure. You you can't do it because no one's buying them, right? So it's what it is. But we'll see, Ash. I hope they get to season 14, and if they do, uh, we'll probably still be reviewing it and giving our thoughts on it in you know that many years. But we'll see if they do. And there, again, there's no guarantee that they that they will for sure. Marcus in HD says, Season 3 was the downfall, bled through great comic material, and killed too many valuable characters. Uh, well, they Season 3, some people, it was their favorite. Like uh, B. Howard, if I hear, so Season 3 was fast-paced, edgier seat action, awesome writing, great characterization, heartfelt moments, etc. So he, he has Season 3 as his absolute favorite season. Marcus in HD says it's the worst season. So <laughs> it depends on how you want to look at it. They went through a lot of stuff, but as you uh, got to uh, hear in that interview yesterday... Uh, from Angela Kang is that they have to put in a lot of stuff and maybe maybe the concern is not that they're putting in too much stuff. I mean, they don't want to put in too much stuff and burn through the content too quickly, but at the same time, they want to put in lots of good stuff because they want to keep the show going and, and there's no guarantee that it's going to get to a 14 or something, even if AMC kind of says that. Um, you know, there's no guarantee that they're going to be able to keep their jobs. If it goes below a certain amount, you know, they're basically, heads will roll. You guys know how it goes, right? They're going to let people go. They're going to switch things up. That's what they're going to do. So um, that's what always happens in business. You know, if things aren't going well, um, you know, people start getting the uh, the whisper axe, right? <laughs> you know, so it's just what it is. Someone's got to take the blame. So they want to put in a lot of good stuff. And even if they burn through too much stuff, um, that's not really a knock on them, at least unless it's, unless it's season three level. They'll probably never go through as much content as they did in, in one season, in season three. Uh, for those of you guys who never read the comic book series, they went through like almost the whole prison story arc, which was like so much stuff in like one season. It was insane. They went through th- so much stuff. It was like crazy. Like all these story arcs, it was like it was like a whole story arc. It could be like a couple episodes or like one episode sometimes. Like Rick with the uh, the phone and stuff. You know, <laughs> it's like it was so fast paced. They even had to bring the governor back, like have him reform a group. Bring it back to kind of fix the mess that season three kind of left it at. Because uh, the governor should have been at least a two-season villain. At least, I think. Uh, you know, like Negan was, right? Or, or longer. Negan was more than two. He should. The governor should have been more than, probably more than two as well, based on the content. But they just blew through that in no time. Alpha Hunt says, or Anna Hunt says, Alpha is the anti-Carol. And that's that's true, right? We did the video on uh, Alpha versus Carol, who will win. It's fun, the comparisons between the two of them, because I, I, I enjoy those quite a bit. We got to see that in that episode, episode 10, so that was fun. Um, Diana Rainey who says, Do you think the Whispers eat people with the zombies? So I don't think so, because I think that, um, you know, if you do that, you'll get sick, as far as I know. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. If you eat uncooked meat, uh, will you get sick, or can you do it without, you know, puking and getting sick and all that? Bill Bliss says, Alpha is horrifying. The other villains had some redeeming qualities. She seems downright evil. Yeah, I think so, right? So that's kind of cool. Like the governor. You know, the governor was, uh, he had some redeeming qualities for his people, but he was straight evil, and Alpha is like that too, right? Uh, Negan actually is a lot different if you look at the way he's been recently, and and Shane's somewhat different too, right? Uh, but but those villains in particular are just simply evil, right? Just like uh, Gareth too. What the F blog says, I feel uh, you are way underestimating their numbers. I think the Whispers have more like 300 members, not 100 like you're saying. Well, that's possible. If uh, if that ends up being the case, what the F blog, you can say that you were right that they have 300 or so because that would be cra- that would be a lot. That would be crazy to see. And the last one for today will be from Danny Manny who says, I believe the movies are a key factor in The Walking Dead's longevity. If they are truly special, they could revitalize The Walking Dead and change the public perception surrounding the series. And um, I agree with you. I agree with you, Danny Manny. Uh, I think that those are really important, and uh, hopefully you know, they do a really good job with them, and hopefully 
um, you know, they're they're substantial and they can stand on their own as really good things that you could maybe collect, like you could buy on Blu-ray or something, and people will want to, right? I mean, like, you know, like it's something that's really, really good, good that we've never seen before, and people actually want to get it because they think it's so awesome. So uh, I hope so, but uh, again, a lot of pressure on everybody involved because it's something where uh, they're fighting to they're fighting to keep the show going, they're fighting to keep the brand alive, and so and I think they're doing a good job of that. Um, but the times are the times there are changing, right? And it's it's tricky for them. But I think the movie idea was a great idea, and it could have gone a lot worse ways than that. So uh, luckily, uh, they're doing that, and uh, we'll see how. How it turns out, but I agree with you. If it's if it's done right, it should at least at least keep the Walking Dead where it's at, or at least have it uh, become a little bit more popular again, uh, like it it was a couple years ago. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. But anyway, that'll be it for today's video, guys. If you liked it, thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, and if you're new and you want to subscribe, bottom left to subscribe. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys again soon for another. As always, it's Trev. I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.